are in Southwold in Suffolk and I love these beach huts. Aren't they amazing? Uh, so many gorgeous colours and we've cho I've chosen to do it at um, around half five in the evening so we get some really good evening light and um, the golden hour glow hopefully. I'm choosing a 10 by 15 panel, 10 by 15 inch panel for a plein air. Set out all my paints on a palette garage that you can get in America. Uh, I'm ready to start, so join me if you want to. Come on then. Oh, and if you'd like to, I'd very much appreciate it if you follow my channel, Claire Bowen Artist, and like this video. Let's start. So I'm using some yellow ochre and um, burnt sienna to draw in. So that's just something from previous on the board. Um, so composition wise, there is a long strip of beach huts and I've decided to go in a little bit closer to them to get it a bit more intimate scene and not such a strip it can be a bit kind of stripey of beach hut you know and I want it uh, a little bit more interesting yes so from the yellow hut and to the kind of beigey hut at the end that's that's what we're going to put in so I'm going to put the, the yellow one at the bottom here I'm just going to fill my way with the composition I haven't actually painted these before so I'm gonna ah! oh sorry there were a lot of wasps. There was a wasp on my hand and I just squished it. Luckily it didn't sting. There he is. No. No. Ow. You're going to... No. No. Ah! So I'm just finishing putting in the huts. I wanted to make sure that it felt like that they were receding away from me. Um, and it's surprising how much smaller they get, you know, I've measured them um, with comparison, comparing, comparing. Uh, so, for example, this size, you know, this blue, navy blue one here, that front bit there compared to the one next to it. So this one is so much smaller as it goes away, recedes. So I'm making sure that I've got that happening. And also the kind of the lumpy, bumpy dunes as well at the bottoms. That's quite important as well. Um, so it feels as though it's, it's happening, which is nice. It's kind of starting. So I've drawn them out and I've made sure that they have receded in size as I've gone along and also poked up this roof into the water so it's not uh, so it breaks it up which is good for composition and poked up that as well along the sea sea line up there the horizon uh, there is some shadows in there which are very nice hope I can get those um, yeah so I'm happy with the start let's begin color mixing I think so the I've noticed that there's a lot of different blues and that's kind of what makes it nice subject um, including with the obviously the sky and the sea behind it so i'm going to talk you through what blues i use to make these blues <laughs> and um, also the light and dark of them versions because it's a very strong light and dark shade on each hut so i want to make sure that i've got good tonal values as well okay so i'm going to start with ultramarine which hut are we going for? I'm going for the far hut, uh, the far blue hut, and a little bit of um, burnt sienna. So that's an equivalent of complementaries, orange and blue. I'm going to come around the other side. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can come closer to me if you like, this way, so you're not in the shade. How's that? Yes. All right, um, and now I'm going to add a little bit of white because I want a lighter version, but I don't want too much light. 
too much white. You can see how milky it goes really quickly without much white in there. Um, and I'm going to just put a little bit more. It's a quick way of doing it, the, um, the burnt sienna. Because I could just put yellow and red in there, which is the same thing. Now I need to have a bit more white in there. All right. So there's a whiter version, a lighter version. I can lighten it up if I need to. Um, and now I'm going to go for uh, the one closest. Um, two. Yes, along from the yellow. Yeah. Um, so I have to kind of determine. So what I do is I determine the colour enough that to match what colours I have on my um, on my posh art. So I would say that's quite indeterminate. It's warmer than the one next to it, which is kind of cerulean. Mm, I think I might go with a, a cobalt and then put a bit of white with it because it's lighter and then decide I probably need a little bit of scarlet lake. And maybe a little bit of lemon. That's not too bad. So that's kind of the darker version. I'm going to make a light version now. So obviously more white, but it can make it a bit milky. So you've got to put the other colours in. So a bit of lemon, yellow, maybe a bit much, a bit of scarlet. There we are. And there's the two together. So I often do that. I often mix the same colour, but the two tonal values of it, because it really helps. Really helps to have um, have it when you start painting, because you can just dive in, um, and it allows you to use a lot more paint. What it does for me. Now I'm going to use do the other blue, which is the kind of the cerulean. So it's a cool blue. Um, and a little bit of lemon. Oh, that was maybe too much. A little bit of red. So now I need to go back to the cerulean because I've used too much of those and it's gone a bit bleh. No, don't like that. And I'm going to just put that aside. Try it again and be a little less heavy handed. Because you don't need much at all. The cerulean is quite a weak colour. You have to use quite a lot of it compared to the other colours. See I've used the white in there and it's really knocked it out. I'm going to put a bit more in there. You're in the shade there Mr B. Yeah, That's better. To. Okay um, I'm going to have a really bright version too. I could have actually done with having possibly my cobalt teal because it's a brighter colour which I haven't got with me. All right, there we are. And then I'm going to do the roof. So I'm going to mix that roof with the three complementaries, sorry, three primaries, which will make a dark color. So I'm going scarlet red, cad yellow and ultramarine. And then you put a bit of white in it and see whether it comes out grey. Piff, puff, poof. We have a grey colour. So that was the three primaries mixed together. It cancels them out when you do that. Cancels out the colour. Uh, and now I'm going to mix... Mm, I think we need a bit of sky. So I'm going to start with titanium, a little bit of, it's similar to the beach hut colour, lemon yellow and cerulean. And I think I might make a warmer colour too. So um, permanent rose and king's blue.
So you can see the difference between the two. It's almost a purpley colour, that. So I can kind of experiment with what, what looks good. The sand, um, when I squint my eyes and I look between the yellow beach hut, the yellow beach hut, and then the sand behind it, because you kind of think sand yellow, but then you've got that big yellow thing in front of it and you realise how not yellow it is. Um, so it's kind of a greeny, grey, reddy, yellow. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope you find that useful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's mix it. It might be more handy. Um, I'd probably start with Naples yellow um, because it's so close to the colour. Um, it's like a kind of head start. And then I'll put King's blue and maybe a little bit of permanent rose. So you can see that it's still yellow, but it's a dull down yellow. There we go. I can always make it a bit more lively if needed. Um, I think I'm going to start now. Oh, I haven't done any green. Uh, so you've got some warmer greens where it catches the light. You want to have a look. And then... Um, cool greens inside the shadows. So I might have the ultramarine, cad yellow, white, start with that, see how it looks. It's a bit cool I'd say. A bit more. Hard to see, isn't it, with the sun's angle? I'm, my my arm's in the way. I hope that you can forgive me for having an arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just going to make so a bit like before with the huts. I'm going to make a kind of a warmer, lighter version as well. So still with the cad yellow, but more of it, and maybe cerulean because it's a lighter blue. Some white and maybe a little bit of um, yellow ochre to go with that kind of grassy look. So there's a couple of, um, I need to probably just, what's the word? Tweak it. Yes, that'll do nicely, tweak it. Nice there. start. There we go, good. What about the end hut? Ooh, I left him because he's a bit ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hut. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make something up as we go on that one. Okay. Um, I, we looked at these this morning, these huts, and they've all got um, kings and queens, isn't it? Yeah. Names. So we can see on this side, they've, they've got one name, and it's Edward the Third, Third I think, mm. which is quite cool. You're going um, to mix up a yellow for this yellow? Hut? Oh, yeah, true. Nice point, Mr. B. I haven't actually introduced you. Maybe I need to right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is my husband, Nick. He is a very lovely cameraman. Thank you. And a videographer. <laughs> videographer. To boot. Nice. OK. <laughs> now we've done that intro. Um, he helps. He's got a good eye. So I'm using Cad Yellow and Scarlet Lake. I really like the Michael Harding yellows, that's what I use. So the cad yellow and the lemon yellow are Michael Harding. The Scarlet Lake is a, uh, what's that called? Windsor and Union. Thank you. Oh, you're good. <laughs> Recognise the texture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a word. <laughs> it's a bit too orangey. Okay, I don't want to spend too long doing this because the scene will change too much. Let's start, shall we? Uh, I'm going to start, you know, people sometimes ask me, well, where do you start in a painting? So I would start on this where the most important things are, which is the beach huts. So if I can get those right to start with, it gives me a little bit of confidence knowing that the painting's going okay. 
and also uh, it will change. So I tend to do the things that change the most. Um, and the light's going to move round, so it's coming round like this, and the light will go more on the other side. So I want to make sure that I capture that light on the front. That's pretty important. Um, I'm going to start with the shadows first of the beach huts. So let's start this dark hut on the side here. I think it needs to be darker. There's quite a lot of reflected light as well. I can see the yellow hut in that in the blue one, which is quite interesting. Just blocking in first, uh, no, um, no detail. I'm also going to look for the colour that I'm using at the moment and see if it's anywhere else. And it is, it's in those, it's similar in here, so I'm going to put that in as well. It's a little bit warmer. So it's one of the things that I'm um, wanting to make sure I do is um, make sure that the, they don't become too boxy because beach huts are a little box and, but they can look a bit kind of uh, stilted if, if I'm not careful. So I want to try and paint with energy and um, gusto, if I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Not too careful kind of edges, I suppose. So I'm just... Loose. Yeah, loose. So I put that on, but it's not light enough. I can adjust it in a minute. Um, I just want to get it in, really. Start it off. What I'm doing is I'm working outwards. So I'm now going to do that one because it's next to that. But what I will do is just lighten it slightly to get that. Get the tonal value better. There we are, that's better. So I can add the kind of reflected colour back once I've got blocked in. Um, I love it that they're all different heights and shapes. It kind of adds to the quirkiness of them. This yellow one is a great kind of um, balance to all the blue. Make sure that I've got it light enough. The front. It's quite warm in that light, in that um, late of the day light. Possibly a bit more. I'm going fairly thin to start with. And then I can go thicker after. There we are. 
Um, I can see some quite cool shadows behind. I don't know whether I want that or not, but uh, just use this brush because it's a similar sort of. They're going to move quite a bit, aren't they? They are. Um, so the light has already gone from these, so I might try and get some of this light on, you know, get these in before it really goes because the sun's going down. It's, uh, again, it's a bit like what I said with the sand back there. It's, it's not as yellow as you think it is, the sand. So I put blue and red in it to calm it down. Can you see that I've scraped there with a, oh, I should have recorded that, but sorry, I did it too quickly. Um, palette knife. With a palette knife because I, I found it was just a little bit too, I don't know what you'd say, mm, ugly. <laughs> yeah, didn't like it. But I, I don't worry about doing, you know, the scraping and changing and because it adds a bit of kind of element to the painting. An extra element that is usually quite nice. This is such a lovely paint here, I'm really enjoying it. It's so, um, it's quiet, I can hear the waves. Um, it's really nice. Hope you are enjoying it too. I'm going to put these shadows in now because they're going to change. So I'm going to use, this. I've got a kind of a shadowy brush there, so I could use that. I'm going to mix it next to the colour I've just mixed, you know, the kind of the yellowy colour, to give me an idea of the colour plus the tonal values, which is quite useful. So although it's a shadow, it still has some warmth in there. Um, I'm not going to try it. It's it's light, it is a light shadow, but whether it's light enough, I mean, whether it's dark enough, sorry. You can hear those gulls. So when I put these in, I then compare it to the other shadow there, you know, the beach hut, and that is, I've done that too warm, really. It needs to be cooled down. I can kind of, I can tell. And as I'm going further away, the shadows are cooler too. I'm being quite loose. Um, thin shadow there. Uh, there we go. So it needs some dark under that as well. Um, maybe I can. So a quick dark is always a, for me, is an ultramarine and burnt sienna. You can see how dark that is, it's amazing. Just give the shadow underneath it, because it's slightly lifted up from the ground. Uh, I didn't like, to, I had too much shadow in. I think I need to get the grass on top and then put the shadow around it. So I'm just going to do that now. These grasses are not easy. Um, I'm looking at all the shadow shapes with my darker grass colour I mixed. So it kind of undulates. 
I can always make them kind of more grassy, like more kind of flicky once I've got the main shapes in. Put some up there as well. So I'm on the lighter tonal value. I'm using my brush in kind of small, sweepy, I don't know what you'd call it, spiky. Making it warmer or cooler as I go. Mixing white or yellow to make it warmer or cooler. shadows on the tops of these roofs when we arrived they were just like just little strips past the the battens and now you can barely see the difference so I'm putting them in from what I remembered they're a bit big I tend to try and put the shadows in first if I can because the shadow shape will move and it will be different and it won't be kind of what I wanted in the beginning. Gives a bit of structure to it, doing this. Helps. It's quite hard at the moment to see whether it's going to be all right or not. Because you never know if a painting's going to work. You know, it's always a bit of a kind of, what would you call it? Lottery. Lottery, yeah, in some ways. Especially with a new subject. So, it's, you know, it feels quite a pressure doing a video as well. <laughs> Sometimes I think, why am I doing this? Crazy. I'm making sure that I have the difference in lights and darks so you see the different um, tonal value. going to change this front so I'm going to get it in again if I can make it look nicer this time I can also go around those grasses a bit I'm trying to make myself not kind of finish it too much because it will look too stilted. I want it fresh. And also those whites, now that the sun is lower, are quite golden already. So I'm mixing some of my yellows and reds into the white. and also shaping as I go too. Okay. 
so I'm, I'm just thickening up the paint here and putting it slightly lighter. Uh, I need to also do the tops now. Uh, I feel as though I'm slightly, you know, rush for time a little because it's going to change a lot as the sun goes down. It starts to make a big difference when you um, put the different tonal values in. different brush. I tend to use different brushes for different colours so they don't muddy. It means a lot of cleaning at the end of the day but I think it's worth it. So I'm just mixing a bit of lemon yellow and white into that cerulean mix to really excuse the sound. I've got a brush in there. Got a bristle. Can you see it? There he is. Sometimes it really helps to be bold, you know, when you're doing these and I do it in one go if you can. There we are. I'm, I'm putting in the shadow and also kind of sculpting as well sculpting the shape because it's scalloped. Yeah. I'm putting this um, on there because it's this colour, it's, it's almost like it's reflecting the sky. Um, even though it's white, it's kind of a blue colour. So, those little upright things really help. <laughs> Let's do it on the other side too. Oops, I've made a dark version of the yellow. Um, with cerulean, scarlet, red and cad. So it's quite a warm dark. It works quite well. Yeah. I've noticed the um, light catching the sides of the baton on the roofs. Um, so I'm going to just put that in now. I haven't put as many in as it's got it on there. I'll put that on and on. It's not there. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I'm using a rigger brush because I want the, um, the strip in between the two call it it's like a I don't know what you'd call it it's a door but it's not a door now I need to go back in and put some shadow in make sure it's dark enough Putting these extras on really seems to make a difference to the feel of them. Even the ugly one. I now need a darker green to go with that. When I do a darker version, I always want to make sure that it really... Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> grass feels like bugs. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit of grass and I thought it was a bug on my leg. So it's got to stand out the darks. So it does, it looks different. That looks different to that, which is what I want. Same for this as well. They bothered to paint their battens green. They have. Nice. Yeah. I take it back. It's not so bad. This end one. I'm going to put the dark under there as well. Okay. Um, it's getting there, I think. I'm happier. I need to get the shape in there because that's going to change. Uh, I can do it with this one. Oh, let me see. A colour per brush. I use um, Rosemary and Co brushes and also um, Pro Art. So this is a Rosemary and Co um, ivory filibut. No, not a filibut. A rigger. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to put the shadow in underneath the blue and yeah, the eaves, the blue and white. I don't think that's dark enough. When I do a mix, I tend to use all the primaries, but in just different, different combinations of colours. Um, Galloping is really cute. Luckily I have three riggers with me and I can then go back in and get the other side as well. Oh, how bonny is that? <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute! Uh, so I'm working quite a lot more than I normally would on something without... Normally I'd cover this whole thing, but I know that it's really going to change and I want to do it before it changes too much. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Also, these sides need to... This needs to be lower down than that to make it feel like it's going that way and at the moment that is incorrect so i i now need to move on pretty quickly swiftly because um that c is gonna change quite quickly with the color 
Um, so I'm using cobalt blue. It's darker on the horizon. This will be a little bit too dark. Got a little bit of cad in there, cad yellow. <laughs> I'm using a nice big brush. Um, it's a ultimate short flat number seven. So short flat is like a bright, same thing. So when I put these in, I then compare how the tonal value is compared to, say, um, the roofs. And the roofs are, I'd say, darker. So I need to lighten up as I'm coming forward. So I've just done a few tests to try and get the, the tonal value right in comparison to these roofs. Um, I don't think it's too bad. I might actually make the roofs a little bit darker and it might help then anyway with the the other bits. I don't know. We'll see. Get it in first and then I can adapt. Oof! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little whoopsie. So I just put some permanent rose in. I'm just going to hoik it out. There we go. No problem. Oh, it's just a bit of a shock. I wanted to just make it a bit warmer in the distance. There's a kind of a what do you call it, purpley, warmy purpley on the horizon line um, due to the it being about seven is it now 20 past 20 past um, and they're clouds and they are clouds yeah so doing it quite loosely and quite nicely <laughs> thank you mr b I quite like that colour. I'm going to just come in and see if there's anything that I can use. It's a tonal value down there, but it's actually a bit light, I think. Because um, it's in shade down there, the lights. God, I'm getting covered. Okay, um, I'm going to now add um, my cerulean mix. Um, at the bottom to go above it. You can see the moon's out. <laughs> I, I'm using turpentine here to thin, but I'm not using very much at all, as little as possible. Um, I'm looking for the moon. Oh, oh there. There I it is. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Facing the wrong way. actually helps to have a bit of the colours that are in the painting um, in the sky. Kind of links it a bit. So this sort of colour is up there similar. So I'm using it, uh, using a lemony yellow at the bottom here. And then I'm going to go more cerulean, so it's bluer in other words, above it.
there's nothing you know there's not much in there so I'm using my kind of brush marks my energy to make it look more interesting I'm now going to go back in with the the, the color behind it this color and just blend the two but blend it with the paint don't know if that's too stripey we'll see not too shabby okay uh, let's get this this in as well now the beach the beach woohoo life's a beach hmm how nice actually quite warm that beach it's um it's warmed up so the sun's gone down. yeah it's got warmer as it's gone down good good point mr b um get it in and then i can adjust it i'm gonna put some of this in as well because it's similar when the light was on it a bit to um, excuse the, set the noise there's some boys playing in the in the huts sadly <laughs> so I'm going back in now with with my brush and actually creating some of the what would you call it the grass shaping the edges mm, really helps to have the edges right so the really light bits I'm going to make sure that they're um, quite thick I don't know if you can see that we will come in and join you so it's, I'm really kind of loading up the brush um, and then catching bits of light I have to kind of remember where the light was because it's changed there was light in there I'm capturing just a little bit more of that evening light on the sky um, I'm making sure it's quite thick paint as well um, so it kind of it gives a bit of body to it because it's quite a uh, a non-entity sky at the moment but with a bit of brushwork and thicker richer paint it really helps so i can see a little bit of uh waves getting in the grasses it helps just to fill these gaps because you can't tell really what's happening they're quite warm I'm going to then put some shadows in too um, the shadows below them oh! 
there are um, there's a combination of kind of reddies in there in the shadows and a, and a cooler blue I don't want too much detail in um, because it's in the distance and it's not important it's just kind of giving a feel of the the dunes going back um, I need to kind of fill the other areas too uh, I'm just going to try and get some people in because uh, I think it needs something back here and there's some people just walking getting the shapes and I can adjust the colours in a minute. It helps to have some people in. I need kind of more uprights too. I'm going to just stick an upright there because I'm feeling daring. Um, I don't know whether to put a boat in or something. It needs more uprights. There's a sign down here, so I'm going to put it, oh, put it there instead. Filling in these gaps with the grass, and it really um, covers it over. So I think I might use my. Uh, What's it called? Mm. Rigger. So to get some thinner shapes. So you can see that it kind of works for, for this. If you want to come a bit closer. It's quite nice in front of it. And then I think I'm going to get a yellow and kind of cut down as well. Shape it a bit more. It's coming. So they're going to be quite light. So these kind of uh, seed heads. Seed heads, thank you. Um, that are sticking up, and they are catching the light as well. So they're quite a joy to paint. And the rigger brush really helps. Just make sure I've got enough light on them. We've got some over here too, but it's more of clumps. I'm putting the sand dunes in. Uh, they have to kind of try and remember, because it's changed so much, how the pattern of the light was, uh, what was in shade and what was in light. So I'm going to kind of put an in-between in and kind of then adjust it if I need to make it lighter or darker. up some lights using quite thick paint.
deciding whether I want any um, lines in um, on the hut here because it's got obviously slats. Slats. Um, not sure about it. I like them. Yeah? Mm hmm. Okay. Just not going to put them all in. Just suggestion. Um, I need to do the other one as well. seem to add an extra element if I can get them in nicely. I'll adjust that in a minute. So I'm going along the wall now. <laughs> oh that one hasn't got that's got uppies. Uppies like that. But I don't think I'm gonna put them in because they're they're um, too small to be able to deal with it. I just adjust that. Some of the lines are lighter and some of them are darker. I have to kind of decide. <laughs> These are darker. Finally, final kind of marks here and just working on the grasses to make them look less clumpy. I don't want it too, too much in there, but you need some just to make it feel a bit bit better. I'm going to have a dark version as well in there. Some of those ends are just a bit too strong. Some are in shade and some are in light. Whew, that was a big pain quite exhausting trying to get the light in before it disappeared behind those trees uh, but I, I think I managed it getting the lights and the darks um, and the feeling of the um, early evening with the purpley uh, I hope that I've um, captured the essence of the huts without it being too tight and um, really enjoyed it Whew. and hope you have do subscribe to my channel and um, like this video and see you again soon. Also, thanks to my husband, Nick. See you next time. Bye. Bye.